Hey yo, what's going on with it? Once again, bros, women, bronies, and back sisters, Otaku Zeki Komodos. This is the one, the only, of course, Mr. Nintendo's on the first one, eleven, aka Chris and Guy 2009. Of course, you guys are watching this channel. Don't check out freedom.com. Of course, from a series on that, if you purchase no business part program, best partnership ever had, all the good shit. Links in the description box down below. It's on site. If any people are interested in no business program, best part you ever had, all the good shit. And that business part like company and all that good shit. <coughs> and uh, without further ado, let's begin. So you can tell my voice is still fucked up. It's been almost two weeks since it's been fucked up like this. So usually it takes about a month or a month and a half by the time I get better. <laughs> and I don't want to waste that much time not doing any videos at all, but I still wanted to get them out of the way. This is a pretty big ass news that dropped. I think it was this past Tuesday or Wednesday when the whole Nintendo Treehouse um, E3 event was happening and taking place. I already mentioned in my one or two part videos, my two parter videos that I did before. But I'm still gonna talk about them anyways. <laughs> Three new Pokemon that were revealed. The four, if you want to call them Magirna, aka or Magiana, or whatever it is. Anyways, <laughs> there's that. And then they talked a little bit about Pokemon Go, too, in development. I wasn't really feeling it too much, but um, I still did like the little bit of the mechanics that they used in that Atlas tried to make with this game. And uh, by the way, in order to keep my um, voice from fucking up really badly, I've been using these mints, these Red Bird mints, some screw hauls, because they don't do much of a good justice job compared to these. You're going to be seeing a lot of these in these videos most of the time. So, it's the only way I can keep my voice alive and not dying in front of you guys. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to sound a little funny too, but it is what it is. So, yeah, um, I'm looking at the Pokemon.com. It's called sunandmoonwebsite.com slash en. So, I guess it's European. I don't know. But I'm going to give the exact definition to all three of these Pokemon. First one that we saw up was um, Pika Peck. And might add you, before I do begin, all these are still in Japanese names. And I haven't been translated to English or other languages like the other stuff that we usually see on Wonder Trail. Like, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I might have fucking bronchitis, guys. So, yeah, that's really, really fucked up that that happened. But whatever. Anyways, looking on the bright side of things. I got a doctor's appointment on Monday anyway, so now I can get that shit fixed up. So Pika Peck, um, let's see, so if the Whitpecker Pokemon is a normal flying type, looks like it would have been Steel Flying, like Skarmory, so I guess I was wrong there. Height is 1 foot 0, weight is 2 foot 6, or 2.6 pounds. Ability is Keen Eye and Skill Link. This is the first time we get Pokemon has a Skill Link ability. I think that was a Generation 5 ability, because in Generation 3 or 4 I didn't see that ability at all, period. So yeah, it's probably Gen 5. Or if it was from Gen 6, so X and Y generation. So I'll read the, all the definitions to you. Links in the description box down below will be provided for you guys who want to read them on your own. No, most of you, pretty much billions of you guys, probably seen it yourself. So it says, Pika Peck can strike 16 times a second with its sharp beak. These beaks, oh actually no, excuse me. These strikes are powerful enough not only to drill through hard wood, but even shatter, shatter stone. Their noise is made by... <clears throat> Their noises made by their blows can signal each other. Some of these signals have been identified as warning signals to greetings among allies. Pikabek's trainer has grown to recognize them as well. These Pokemon drill holes in trees and store food in, hop food in holes. They also like small glittering objects and will tuck them away in their food stores, too. It is often said that it says, quote, Something lost, something missed, check inside the Pika Peck's nest. <laughs> Uncle, that's a clever little thing you guys did there, Game Freak, Mr. Masuda, or Shigeri Orihime. I think that's what his name is, I don't know. And it also says, Pika Peck will attack distant opponents by zipping seeds at them. These shots have been enough, had enough strength to extract to embed them into seeds in the trunks. Now we go on to the second one. Actually, I'm going to save him for last because <laughs> any of you people who follow me on Twitter or just millions of other Pokemon fans on Twitter or have just been on the internet. This thing has got a shit ton of memes and jokes all over the web. It's been just <laughs> a fucking trend this past weekend. Only word I'm going to say is that they keep comparing it to fucking Donald Trump. And and I said this on my Twitter earlier today. As much as I hate that little racist asshole, little piece of shit stain, worthless piece of shit human being, even though he's worth billions, because he's a racist fuck, but <laughs> I really love the crap out of that joke that they're making with him. Most of you guys probably know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to save him for last. So next up, we got Grubbin. Hey, he's probably going to end up being like Joltik a little bit, because he's probably going to end up being an electric bug. 
in the second one. So yeah, I apologize if I had to do a two-part video on this. So anyways, here we go. Sorry, I still got those mints in my mouth. They're going to have to get used to that for the next three weeks. So anyways, if I don't get any better with this fucking, hopefully it's not bronchitis. I really hope to God it's not. It probably is so. So it says this is the larva Pokemon. It's a bug type Pokemon. Of course, who else knew? It's one foot zero. Weight is nine foot and nine foot seven. Nine point seven pounds. Ability is swarm. This is a lot more of a small definition of Pokemon. So it says, Grubbin relies on its sturdy jaws as weapons, weapons in the battlefield, and as a tool for burrowing through the earth. Grubbin loves electricity, which is why it can be found near power plants. And substations <laughs> by wrap by wrapping tree branches and these sticky threads that is, is spews from its mouth grubbin can swing around like an actor in suspension wires <laughs> i would say a little bit more enthusiastic i'll try that again because grubbin can, grubbin can swing around like an actor on suspension with suspension wires see that hurts my voice a little bit i can't really do it like that and get where i'm coming from though other than that, as much as a fan, I'm not of a fan I am with bug type Pokemon, it just does evolve into a, like a bug electro type. Because I actually did train um, Jolta to Galvantula. I've said this a couple times in my Pokemon related videos. <clears throat> I will say this if he evolves from like Jolta to like Galvantula, I did train him up to level 100. One of my most nostalgic, no, many nostalgic Pokemon. I used for Black White 1 because I never got to own 2. And ends up evolving into that, I will definitely keep them on my team. That's for damn fucking sure. I would love to see the design impact be a very impactful, positive one. I'm really liking Grubbin's design so far. I actually like Pika Peck the most, and then Grubbin second. Now we got the third one. <laughs> and a lot of people already know what his name is. There's been a shit ton of Donald Trump references toward this thing. It's like, it's the Donald Trump of Pokemon. It's the exact same birthday as the Sim, June 16th. It's Young Goose. <laughs> And it is the, um, <clears throat> I think it's like the mole Pokemon. It's called the loitering Pokemon, the category. Type is normal. Height is one foot zero. Weight is 13.2 pounds. And then the ability is a brand new one. It's called Stakeout. I think it's the reverse version of Pursuit, but as an ability. Because instead of switching your Pokemon out, when you switch your Pokemon in, he ends up attacking right away. It's kind of like a quick attack version of Rough Skin. That's I think that's how stake how the stake out ability is supposedly supposed to work. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but yeah, here we go. This is the real long one right here. So it says <laughs> Young Goose is the big eater. This is the Pokemon's desk description. If you guys want to check it out yourself, links down below. Young Goose is a big eater that is never satisfied. The majority of its long body is given over towards its stomach and is digested and it's digested into swift. So it's always hungry. It has strong fangs, so it can crush and consume the hardest of objects. Each young goose <laughs> chooses its own particular route for searching out prey. It stalks along this route searching for food until it is exhausted and at which point it drops sleeps wherever it may be. <laughs> it drops and sleeps wherever it may be. It is though that the Pokemon decided to go along their routes based on safety. So there's no risk in fa falling asleep at any time thought i cut myself with a fucking paper cut never mind let's keep going so it says young goose is not a pokemon that is native to the alola region but it was brought to the region to help deal with the explosive population of a certain other pokemon and now young goose are commonly seen around seen around the alola region some young goose have the ability have an ability that is no no other pokemon has discovered has previously had this ability is known as Stakeout, the one I was talking about before. That's like a quick attack version and the ability version of Ruskin and quick attack. I don't know, or extreme speed, I don't know. That might be how it works on competitive battle, I'm not sure. And the play by play. With the Stakeout ability, this Pokemon this Pokemon's move can deal twice the normal damage to any other Pokemon that switches in or enters the field mid battle. Excuse me, Derek. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. I was just eating barbecue stuff not too long ago, about an hour back. Since this Pokemon is so common in the Alola region, it's easy to catch one, but this Pokemon has a terrible temper and it is hungry and demands a whopping amount of food. Alright, and see if I can find the other white versions of Pokemon and we'll see what happens. Oh, and then they did talk about Magearna, the artificial Pokemon with a heart. 
Oh, and it actually has the Pokedex thing, so, so now I can read it. So it's called the Artificial Pokemon 3'3". Three three. Um, that's, that's what its height is, 3'3". Three three. Weight is 175 pounds, almost 200 pounds. Holy shit. <laughs> it's like half of my ass. Holy crap. But anyways, um, <laughs> so yeah, um, of course, it's half steel. So a lot of steel types are usually heavy as hell. Super, super bulky as shit. This type is Steel Fairy, and the ability is Sound Soul Heart. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Let's go on with the Pokeballs. This is a very long, lengthy Pokedex, by the way, just in case you guys wanted to read it yourself. So there we go. So it says, McGeerner is a mythical Pokemon that was created by a scientist of uncommon genius, of an uncommon genius 500 years ago. McGeerner has the power to pre-receive the emotions, thoughts, and feelings of other Pokemon. If a Pokemon is injured, McGeerner will feel the other's pain and suffering and will try as hard as it can to save that Pokemon. McGeerner's real body is a spherical construction and in its chest is called a soul heart created by scientists who gathered the life energy form of Pokemon. <clears throat> McGeerner has the ability to transform itself into other appearances of a, of a Pokeball. It does this, actually no, that kind of was a real weird wording right here. It does so when it sleeps, apparently when it is also sad. McGeerner has the ability called the Soul Heart Ability, a new ability that that no previous Pokemon has added before. Soul Heart has the effect of raising McGurner's special attack by one each time another Pokemon in the area faints. Well, this is just doesn't count as the one that's on your team. This That's on your team. It actually counts as the one that's your opponent as well, so that's cool. This strategy. <coughs> <coughs> Let's keep continuing. If you use a Pokemon... Oh, okay. This is the new ability, the one thing that is good for use, for use in battle. If you use the QR code scanner to function in the Pokemon Sun and Moon, to scan the corresponding QR code, you are able to obtain the mythical Pokemon, Magirna. Magirna will be a special ally if you can put it to work on your behalf of the world of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Oh, that's it. The Pokemon Sun and Moon. Check out Pokemon.com for details of wherever you can find a QR code to get Magear now. Of course, it's going to be coming out in Japan. Only. I doubt it's going to come out here in the United States until 2017 or the year after, 2018. Look how long it took for us to get fucking Volcania. And then, like, um, Zygarde after that. Even though everyone calls Zygarde already, but they gave it to us anyways. They're still doing that Pokemon NASDAQ 20th anniversary thing, by the way, too. That little distribution. <clears throat> but other than that, let's see, um... I don't know if it said anything about Zygarde, because I did say something about Zygarde Core before. Oh, 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 I almost totally forgot about this shit. That there was supposed to be new forms. Oh, here they go. Here they go. There's supposed to be different Altherian, different type of forms for, like, um, the two new um, legendary Pokemon we've seen already a thousand times, which is um, Solgaleo and Lunala. So it says the new forms of legendary Pokemon. Solgaleo and Lunala are two Pokemon that hold an important key to the story. The forms of these two Pokemon will take place as they release their mighty power. I almost gonna say Mighty Morphin Power Rangers are <laughs> That's so fucking 90s of me to say that. I was a 90s kid back in the day, so it's kind of common in a, a way. <clears throat> in that sense of form. Let's keep it moving. The forms that these two Pokemon take when they release their mighty power are now revealed in the, as the Radiant Sun Phase and the Full Moon Phase. Both appear to be Sharing with a stronger light, <laughs> stronger light in their own previous release, previously released images. Will these Pokemon? What will these two do when they release their full power? So, it's a mystery. Let's see. Um, I had to say something about Zygarde. If it doesn't, that's gonna kind of suck ass a little bit. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna see if I could go to the regular Pokemon website. See if they have anything. If not, I'm just going to go to Cerebi again. Because I remember, like, I talked about a little bit about the Zygarde 10% in the other form. Oh, she, they actually talked about Pokemon Go a little bit, so not bad, not bad. All right, so I guess I could... Oh, actually, no, they're only about pictures. So let's see. If it says any information about them, I'll read that as well. Oh, it actually shows it. So it says, um... Oh, God, that's way too much. All right. I'm only going to read half of this article, so here we go. So it says Pokemon Go. Travel between the real world and the virtual world of Pokemon Go for the iPhone and Android, aka iOS and Android, phone devices. 
With Pokemon Go, you'll discover Pokemon in a whole new world of your own. Pokemon Go is built on Niantic's real-world gaming platform and will use real locations to encourage players to search far and wide for the real world to discover Pokemon. Pokemon Go will also allow players to find and catch more than 100 different Pokemon as they explore their surroundings. The Pokemon video game series has used real-world locations such as the Hokkaido and Kento regions of the Japan. New York and Paris is an inspiration for their fantasy settings in which games take place in which games place place. Now for the real world we'll <laughs> be seeing the settings. Get your feet and step outside of the to find <clears throat> find and catch wild Pokemon. Explore cities and towns around where you live around or even live around the globe to capture as many Pokemon as you can. As you move around, your smartphone will vibrate to let you know that there's a Pokemon nearby. Once you've encountered a Pokemon, take aim at your smartphone's touchscreen and throw a Pokeball to catch it. Be careful when you try to catch it, or it might run away. Also look for the Poke Stops located at interesting places such as public art installations, historical landmarks, and monuments which you can collect Pokeballs and other items. <laughs> Let me just stop it right there and say the only thing that sucks ass a little bit about this Pokemon Go game is that there's only the first 150 Pokemon. I don't even know if Mew's going to be involved in it. So it's pretty much all for the Gen 1ers out there. If you want to go back into Pokemon, maybe this is the way to go. I don't know. Eh, I'm not sure. i got to take another one of these breath mints, man. I really do. And no, it's because my breath doesn't stink or any of that bullshit. It's just because i got to get my throat better. But anyways... Yeah, um, that's pretty much the only thing that sucks ass a little bit is that there's only the first 150 Pokemon. Might not even be Mew in here, which should be 151 at least. I don't know. Maybe another four or five years from now, they'll have all eight, 900 Pokemon because, you know, we're getting sun and moon. So it's not going to be 792 or 790. Or actually, no, 722 like we have now. It's going to be a shit ton more than that. Also, since the only two historical landmarks, I live over here in Nevada, you know, besides the giant ass trip of Vegas. There's that, and there's this fucking, there's an army military base over there, and then there's, like, one way up here. I don't know. That's really the only three historical landmarks I know over here in this fucking city, everywhere else. But since it's not kid childhood family friendly, it's probably not going to have any Pokemon over there in the strip. <laughs> That's mostly an adult-oriented place. So I doubt there could be anyone over there to be playing Pokemon. Maybe there might be a few in their 20s, early, mid-30s at least, like me. But other than that, there's probably going to be a small percentage over there that's probably going to like Pokemon, and that's probably it. But anyways, um, let's keep it moving. So it says, customize your trainers. When you first play Pokemon Go, you'll get, the cust get to customize the look of your trainer, choosing apparel and accessories to give him or her a cool look. You customize characters as you move around the map as well as your profile <clears throat> on your profile page. Plus... Other players will see your character and as they visit the gym in your control. Add your Pokedex. Those are the last two I'm gonna watch. I'll talk a little bit about that. You could guys should like read the rest of your room. So it says in Pokemon Go, you will gain levels as a trainer, and higher levels you will be able to catch more powerful Pokemon to complete your Pokedex. You'll also have more access to be, have more powerful items such as Great Balls and Ultra Balls to give you a better shot. Catching Pokemon. Keep exploring and encountering Pokemon to raise your levels. There are other ways to add Pokemon to your roster too. If you catch some of the same Pokemon, <clears throat> catch some of the same Pokemon, same species of Pokemon enough, you'll get an opportunity to evolve one of them. And as you explore many of the, as you know, as you explore, you may find Pokemon eggs at Poke Stops. Which will hatch after you've walked a certain distance. So I'm glad they kept the egg hatching mechanic the same. When they hatch, you may find Pokemon you've never seen before. Some of the Pokemon will appear in certain places near near you or where you live around the world. For example, some water type places may only appear in lakes and oceans. For far away from home, be, be sure to stay alert for Pokemon you wouldn't normally encounter. If you catch some of these same species of Pokemon enough, you can evolve them. This is useful for catching Pokemon that you had a tough time finding in a while. For example, there's a large number of Poliwag in your area, but no Poliwhirl nearby. Catch a lot of Poliwag and there will eventually gain the ability to have one of them evolve in a Poliwhirl. 
Join a team in battle. At a certain point in the game, you'll be asked to join one of the three teams. You, Once you join a team, you'll gain the ability to assign Pokemon you've caught. Hold on, guys. I got to do a two-parter on this. One second. I have pizza in the background. I totally forgot about that. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. See you in a minute.